Well, hi, everyone. This is the Brad Free Report for January 18th. It's been a little bit wet in Southern California, and the racing has been a little bit quiet. The news last week, well, Escape Clause dominated the Grade 3 La Cunada against a Philly Mayor division that is a little bit on the shallow side right now. It'll be very interesting to see who shows up in the first Grade 1 of the meet for the division. That's on March 16th, the Grade 1 beholder. But for now... The California West Coast Philly Mare Division is extremely light. I don't know who could have defeated Escape Claus last weekend. She was good. Another Philly or Mare who was not so good was Selcourt. She was expected to win the Kalukan Queen last Sunday. She completely bombed as the odds on favor. This is a Philly who, for a brief time last spring, was the top female sprinter in California. She finished second. Another odds on loser at Santa Anita. We had a lot of Odds on horses last week at Santa Anita. In fact, of the 36 races, nine of them had odds on favorites. Only two of those odds on favorites actually won seven losers. So kind of lopsided wagering last week at Santa Anita. A very interesting comment made by Santa Anita's new racing secretary, Steve Lim, in a conversation with Daily Racing Forum correspondent Steve Anderson. Lim hinted at a possible reduction in the number of stakes races next year. January at Santa Anita. Regarding the 15 stakes races at Santa Anita this January, Lim asked rhetorically, do we need that many stakes in January? The insinuation, of course, is that probably not. You know, it's very interesting. The contrast is striking between two Strana Group owned and operated racetracks, Gulfstream Park and Santa Anita. While Gulfstream Park has elevated its January profile with races such as the $9 million Pegasus World Cup, $7 million Pegasus Turf, at Santa Anita, it seems like the trend is to reduce the relevancy of winter racing. Fewer stakes races next January, maybe. Lower class levels, made in 20s for three-year-olds. It's been fascinating to watch the difference in promoting these two winter signals, Gulfstream Park and Santa Anita. And speaking as a California homer, it's kind of sad to see. Well, there's plenty of relevancy this weekend at Santa Anita. On Saturday, the grade two Palace Birdies includes Breeders' Cup, two-time Breeders' Cup sprint winner Roy H. And on Monday, Vasilika will try to begin a new win streak. She lost last time in the matriarch. She runs in the grade three megahertz. Okay, before we talk about the Palace Verdes, Let's talk about the biggest race in January anywhere. It's the Pegasus World Cup, January 26th at Gulfstream Park, a mile and one-eighth, $9 million. Let's take a look at some of the key factors, key handicapping factors going into the Pegasus. The favorites, and we're going to talk a little bit more about odds in just a minute, but the two favorites, it's clearly Accelerate and, and City of Light. Okay, so who sets the pace? I think it's Pattern Recognition. He's been on the lead his last four starts all around one turn. The Pegasus will be Pattern Recognition's first start around two turns. I think they're going to let this guy roll, take them as far as he can. I expect Pattern Recognition to be on the lead. If you're looking for a little bit of a long shot, Bravazo, nobody talks about Bravazo. He sh his odds should be decent around the 10 to 1 range. He's in good form. He's been a second last time out in the Clark. He continues to train well for Wayne Lucas at Oakland Park. I think Bravazo could slip under the cracks. Entries for the Pegasus will be drawn on Tuesday, and post position will be a factor. The last five years at Gulfstream Park, a mile and one-eighth on the main track, posts one through five have averaged 15.6% winners. Posts six through 14, only 6% winners. That's 50 races over the last five years. Posts one through five seem to have a decided advantage over posts six through 14. So if City of Light and or Accelerate draws outside, it's at least something to consider. Now, is post position a major handicapping factor? No, it's not. And all we need to do is roll the tape back to April at Oakland Park to illustrate exactly why. That City of Light on the outside of Accelerate through the stretch of the Oakland handicap, there were 11 horses in this race. City of Light drew post 11, Accelerate drew post 10, 
and those two drew away from the field. So an outside post position is not a kiss of death for a good horse. This was at Oakland Park, City of Light, giving Accelerate his only loss in 2018. But it will be a factor at Gulfstream Park next Saturday. If you draw outside, it's not the best place to start from. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose the race. Okay. Regarding the odds for the Pegasus. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I believe City of Light will start favored a week from tomorrow in the $9 million Pegasus World Cup. We already know that he has defeated Accelerate at a mile and one eighth. He has tactical speed and just as important, City of Light shipped already to Florida. He shipped this week. Accelerate has been bogged down in a kind of an interrupted training routine because it's been wet in Southern California and the main track has been closed. I expect City of Light to go off as the favorite. And by the way, these are early odds a week and a half out and these odds will change. Gunner Bear on Seeking the Soul, five and six to one, a pair of comfort behinders in good form. Pattern recognition, six to one. You know what? That could be a little bit too low. I expect his odds to maybe drift up at least a little bit, likely pace setter. Bravazo, 10 to one. I'm going to take a shot on Bravazo at 10 to one. And then Audible, I don't know. I just don't like this horse, and I could be wrong about him as well. I have him at 12 to one, but he gets bet every single time. The only thing I'm convinced about is that City of Light and Accelerate will be the two favorites. I expect City of Light to be the favorite, the betting favorite, when all is said and done a week from tomorrow at Gulfstream Park, and he'll have his hands full facing Accelerate, a couple of California-based horses, headed to Florida for the $9 million Pegasus World Cup. That's an early look at projected odds by me, and I could be wrong about that. All right, let's talk about something a little bit closer to home. It's the Grade 2 Palace Verdes on Saturday at Santa Anita. It's race number nine, six furlongs on the main track, obviously, and two-time Breeders' Cup Sprint winner Roy H. is the favorite. He's the most probable winner. He actually comes into this race with the exact same training pattern that he did one year ago in this race. He'd won the 2017 Breeders' Cup Sprint, came into the Palace Verdes, won that same training pattern this year, including a recent three furlong blowout. Now, can we beat Roy H.? Well, if the best horse wins this race, it'll be Roy H. But there's another good horse in here. At least I think he's good. And his name is Kanthaka, and he is listed at 4-1. to one. Now, Kanthaka will be facing older for the first time in his career. But his race in the Malibu Stakes on opening day, he finished 8th. But let's take a look at the tape. There were two West Point thoroughbred horses in the race, number 7, 7 Trumpets, and number 12, Kanthaka, in the black and yellow silks of West Point thoroughbreds. Kanthaka broke well, but then Flavian Pratt took him back. That's his style. As Seven Trumpets rolls up in about seventh, two off the fence right now. And when an owner has two horses in the race, the last thing you want is for them to one or the other to compromise the other. But that's exactly what happened through no one's fault. As we take a look through the turn and Kanthaka back third to last, but when seven trumpets, who you can see number seven, seven trumpets on the turn, when seven trumpets begins to tire, well, he's going to tire right into the face of Kanthaka. And as we continue to roll the tape, we're going to see Kanthaka steady sharply, drop back, lose all momentum, and apparently lose all chance. That gave him an alibi for losing, but it's what Kanthaka did after the trouble that was actually quite noteworthy. Kanthaka quickly regained stride. He tried to re-rally. He ended up finishing eighth with a clean trip. If seven trumpets had not backed up into Kanthaka, I think that Kanthaka would have finished a clear second behind McKenzie over a racetrack that seemed to favor the outside lane. So we are looking for Kanthaka with a clean trip on Saturday to possibly spring an upset in the grade two Palos Verdes, but to do so, he'll have to defeat the odds on favorite, and that is Roy H. Okay, time to wrap things up with the thumbs up and thumbs down segment. Thumbs up, Groundhog Day at Santa Anita will be very special this year because it's mandatory payout day in the Rainbow Six, pending California Horse Racing Board approval next week. 
February 2nd has been designated as the mandatory payout for the Rainbow Six. There are three graded stakes races that day, the San Pasquale, the San Marcos, and the Robert Lewis. And on February 2nd, that is a day to get involved in the Rainbow Six. Look, on a daily basis, I'm not in favor of this bet. I don't like a bet that returns only 54 cents of every dollar wagered on a daily basis. A lot of people like the bet anyway. I'm going to wait for February 2nd and looking forward to that. Thumbs down. Well, how about the odds on excess? We referred to this earlier. 36 races last week, nine odds on favorites. Now, just because there's an odds on favorite does not necessarily mean it's an unattractive wagering race. However, 25% of all races last week had an odds on favorite. By the way, odds on favorites went two for nine with six seconds. There's an odds on favorite Saturday at Santa Anita. His name is Roy H. We'll see if Kanthaka can wear him down. A week from Saturday, it's the $9 million Pegasus World Cup. City of Light, Accelerate, Pattern Recognition on the lead, and maybe Bravazo coming from behind to spring and upset. I'm taking next week off. I'll be back in two weeks to talk about the Rainbow Six mandatory payout at Santa Anita on February 2nd. I'm Brad Free. Thanks for watching.